Welcome guys and gals to another DVD video and I have an interesting one for you today. And this is because we have a little bit of salt, which is, uh, I think I can say safely that this is the first time I've received salt from the killer as me playing Survivor. Now I, I've, trust me, I've received plenty of salt over the years playing Survivor from other Survivors because you don't live up to their standards. We all know how that goes, right? But this didn't happen. This was a Skull Merchant that they did not like how things went. Now, I'm going to have timestamps up over to the left or whatever. So if you want to skip to the portion, because I'm going to have the highlights twice. Um, the first time that will be with no commentary. And so if you don't want to watch the comment or listen to the commentary, and you just want to watch the gameplay, you can do that. Or if you want to listen to commentary, I'll have a timestamp for that. It'll be the same highlights, but it'll have commentary with it. And then the salt will be afterwards and so on. So, but the main reason I'm doing this is because it's like, basically, yeah, it's the first time it's happened, but also because I want, I'm very curious what your perspective is. Cause I'll dive into this afterwards, but like, since I kind of understand both perspectives, I'm just more so curious of what everybody else thinks. But of course, you know, we'll just go ahead and get into the highlights of the Skull Merchant not being very happy by the results of the game. So of course, I hope you enjoy and I will see you later.
So now a little post-game commentary. If you're watching this, this is just giving my thoughts during the match because the first half was just, you know, the game itself. And this is like the post-game whatnot analysis or whatever. So I was running my all altruism build, as you can see, healing build, whatever you want to call it. And we are facing a lovely Skull Merchant. And uh, the main thing I was concerned about facing the Skull Merchant was that you know how they're kind of notorious for setting up three gens. Fortunately, that didn't happen. But it was unfortunate that she was right by hook. I mean, that's fine because, I mean, she wasn't that far when I unhooked them. So it's like, I, it kind of makes sense that she came back. I was really confused why this TTV decided to do that. But they were running Decisive, which has been making a comeback recently. So they did that just for the trolls and everything, which it was pretty funny. And fortunately, she did not pick me up here, so very interesting. So as I said earlier, she didn't pick me up, which I thought was kind of surprising, but thankfully that didn't happen. The good old Nancy here decided to pick me up, and as you can see, it's like she was more... The Skull Merchant was more focused on the Jane and the Ada for obvious reasons, which I won't state, but uh, you know why. So now we get picked up by... The lovely Ada, or almost, and then I hop in a locker because I hear the terror radius. I know she's coming, and luckily she didn't hear me because I'm usually a survivor that I pretty much always run Iron Will. But this is one of the very few builds that I don't run Iron Will because, once again, it's my all healing and unhooking build. And, yeah, I kind of got boned here because of the whole drone here. Um, I mean, honestly, I probably could have stayed there, but, like, I was worried she was going to come back because then she was going to know I was in a locker. Not like it really mattered in, in the end. And this would have been a time where I really wish I did have Iron Will because then I maybe could have hit around a boulder or something like that and she wouldn't have heard me. But of course, I don't have Iron Will, so um, Meg is kind of loud. <laughs> so, and then there you go. Skull Merchant spots me. Fair enough. Fair game. And I go ahead and get downed. Um, but yeah, I mean, took a while into the match for me to get caught, but you know, it is what it is. And this is where it gets interesting. So obviously the Nancy comes to save me. And as you can see, the Skull Merchant's coming right back. And who does she go for? Lovely me. Now, um, I mean, to be fair, I kind of did just run right into her. But um, once again, there's only two hooks by this point. And she, and um, there's only one gen left. So it makes sense why she wants to tunnel me. At least initially, I kind of screw. that's a big boo-boo right there. I don't know why I fast vaulted there because I think she was going to leave me. But then after I fast faulted, then she was like, oh, I'm going to go back after you. So, I mean, this is kind of like a, it's not a full-on tunnel, but it sort of is. Because she does go after the Nancy for a little while, but then she commits to me again. So, it's kind of, and I try to fake there. Obviously, it didn't work. And we go ahead and get pretty much tunneled, and that's that. Here we are on Death Hook, And it, I honestly didn't think we were going to get unhooked here. Because it was just a whole, you know, fight back and forth before we eventually get unhooked but yeah because she was sticking by which i honestly don't blame her one bit but it finally happens and we get picked up thankfully and get off the hook and we reach end game one of the very few times i wish i was running adrenaline and i was really surprised by the no ed um honestly i was i i was not expecting that at all and I mean, to be fair, you know, continuing my point from earlier about the Noed, it's like, I mean, I guess since she was kind of struggling, you can kind of expect Noed, but it's just, I've never really seen one on Skull Merchant. So this is where it gets fun. Of course, with no one left behind, I can see all of my teammates. And this is where we have the long take or whatever you want to say of the end game. Uh, Ada's healing me up, which she takes a little while. But then, of course, when I go to heal Ada, it's a lot faster because of the build I'm running. Um, and I don't know why I didn't try to take more body blocks here later but i'll talk about it more when it gets here but obviously you see i heal a lot faster it's one of the most satisfying things about this build is how fast you heal others if i had will make it active that would be like super fast um but i didn't open the gate because i saw that she was going back for the jane so i was like okay maybe i'll try to body block and whatnot but um yeah i don't know why i hesitated here i really should have because like the ada went in for it i really should have went in for it too but I didn't. She did get the gate open, but unfortunately, she got caught. Now, luckily, um, she doesn't pick up right away. There's that. But then Ada has Saboteur, so that hook's gone. Like, this Ada was going nuts. She was, like, that person was going off like crazy. So, the Saboteur, that hook's gone. And then she's just going to go ahead and body block before she can reach the other hook. Once again, I don't know why I was hesitating. I should have been taking hits, too. But in the end, it didn't matter. Because, boom, they get off of the grab or whatever and then we just 
get a conga line going here we all line up together and then when we look back you can kind of just see when the skull merchants like you know screw you guys and uh the gal squad made it out so very very satisfying and so up next we have the salt albeit it's not a lot but it is what it is and here we are ladies and gentlemen guys and gals and this is the lovely message i received after the match now I was the only one that this person could message because clearly they're PlayStation and I'm PlayStation. Everybody else was probably on PC or whatever. But uh, I was the only one who was PlayStation, so I was the only one that they could message. And this is the lovely response or message I got sent to me after the match. Now, it's not the worst thing in the world. I, I know people have received way worse messages and things like that. But first time it's happened to me from a killer. Um, I, it's just, I, I don't understand people who do this. I'm being completely honest with you. I really don't understand it because it's like, I understand if you have a crappy match and everything and you want to vent, but like, I don't see the whole thing about messaging somebody else about it. Because trust me, from the times I've played Killer, oh yeah, I've had plenty of frustrating matches, but I don't message anybody after the match. Like, there's no point. It's like, just move on to the next one. Just because you have one bad match doesn't mean the next one's going to be bad and whatnot. So let's just move on to the next match. Um... Trust me, this probably could have got a whole lot worse if I responded and whatnot, but it's like, I'm not going to do that because that's just going to open a whole can of worms and everything, and it's just going to be a whole back and forth kind of thing, and the la and that's the last thing I want. I don't want this to become a whole thing where we're fighting back and forth, so it's like I just went on my merry way, and you know I hope that that Skull Merchant had a better match in the next one because, like, come on, we all have crappy matches. You just move on to the next one and hope to do better. So once again, I know it's not the worst in the world but for hate messages, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, a very lovely message to receive after a match. So that concludes the little highlights or whatever and the salt. Now, once again, I know it's not the worst thing in the world. It's pretty straightforward. I 100% get that. But like I said, it was the first time it's happened to me. And it just all depends on what your perspective is. Because in my opinion, I can see both sides of it. Okay. Because as a survivor main, because I play survivor like 98% of the time. Um, I could have easily been whining and saying like, oh, they're tunneling me. This is awful. What a meanie and all that stuff, right? Because some people will be like that. However, when you look at what the position was for the Skull Merchant, what position they were in, by the time there was one gen left, they only had two hooks and I just got off of a hook. So if you're in their shoes, you understand why they're trying to tunnel me because they want to get me out of the match, right? They want to tunnel me to get me out of the match. So then it's like, okay, now then it's a 1v3 or whatever, but that didn't happen and that's probably one of the reasons they're upset but also they probably didn't like the whole team effort there at the end i like honestly i probably could have done way better trying to body block and things like that i don't know why i was so hesitant but uh yeah i mean it still all worked out in the end and you can just kind of see when the skull merchant um gave up so i'm not shaming this player because i i understand from their perspective why they were doing what they were doing but I'm just doing this because once again it's the first time i've received salt from the killer because of what happened in the match and, you know, it just, it is what it is. I don't understand people who, you know, send hate messages over a game like this and, or any game in general. If you don't like how the match went, that's fine. You can vent a little bit to yourself or whatever, but just move on to the next game. Like whining isn't going to change anything. So, um, just move on to the next match. And I kind of figured with who I saw was on my team. I was like, I was like, yeah, this match probably is going to not go very good for the Skull Merchant. And so, yeah, it is what it is. So once again, I'm very curious to hear what your opinions are on it. You know, who was in the right, who was in the wrong, or, you know, doesn't really matter. But um, I hope you enjoyed the highlights. And of course, as always, I hope to see you all next time.